Hi, I'm Wilson Curry. Welcome back to my world. And today, I've got sort of a crossover kind of a collectible, antique as it were, that, uh, you know, is a firearms related, yet also a nice collectible category, and referred to as trench art. I sometimes refer to it as shell art. I think we can refer to both things. It doesn't really matter. But what we're talking about is during the wars, particularly the First World War and the Second World War, of course, here's a very large uh, uh, piece of uh, armament here, ammunition, as it were, that's in its original form, other than there's no powder left in it and the primer has been removed from it, but it's a, a monstrous cannon shell, as you can see in its original form. However, during those times when soldiers weren't being shot at or running for their lives, uh, they'd have a lot of downtime, idle time, and they would take and turn this into this. And that's what we become referred to as shell art. This particular case here, not only has this been all pounded out and decorated with a rose, they also nickel plated this at one time, which really makes this one kind of different compared to other ones that I've seen. This one also left the actual projectile in it, as you can see there. So referred to as trench art or shell art, there are so many variations of this I can't even begin to tell you. Some are beautifully done, some not so well, but I have some examples here and I'll just run through them real quick. Here's one uh, that they've uh, fluted the edges on. You can see they pounded out flower form in this nice little decoration. And remember, this was all done by hand. And this is Mark Verdun, which was the site of a major battle uh, in World War I. So there's an interesting thing. So that's from 1915 or whatnot. And I think there was another one here. Uh, let me see if this has any information. Now this one, what they've done with this particular cannon shell is they fluted the uh, top edges of it. They've pounded in uh, floral and leaf forms on the body, but then th somehow, whatever way they did this, they've pinched the, uh, uh, th this part of the uh, shell. I, I think this is really cool. And uh, I've never really seen that many that have had uh, a pinching like that, other than the fact that I also found its larger form uh, some time back. Now this one is a really nice example. You can see the size of it compared to the other ones that we've showed you at this point. And uh, this one also was marked Verdun, and this one's dated 1918. So there's the form pounded out on that, Verdun, 1918. And once again, it has this pinch waist, so to speak, and uh, very decorative. Uh, the second one, this other version here, oh, I'm not even sure I even know how to pronounce that. I presume that's French. Uh, might need some help on that, but uh, Thoreau, is that what we have there? And this one, rel relatively simple line pounding here, except uh, I think what they wanted to do here by putting the banner on, maybe they thought that they would put their name in at one time or present it to someone. But once again, this is another one. These all have a pinched waist is, uh, is what I like about these, quite different than, than the others. And finally, uh, we've got two over on this side, and this one has Chateau uh, imprinted on that. And uh, the, well, gosh, I guess I'm just not that versed in the way the French write their names, but I'm presuming that's what that is as well. And here's another one that's pounded out with this uh, sort of a V shape on here, diamond, what have you. That's pretty neat. And then finally, here's a, another one a little more svelte. And we've managed to find all of these with a pinch waist on them. Now this one, once again, is floral form and not dated, but this is what we refer to as shell art. Well, we should talk about the value because everybody wants to know what everything is worth. And th this is all over the map, really, and, and uh, because it's sort of a specialized area of collecting. You see up here, here's some various uh, pieces of armament that have not been pounded out. This is all vintage military projectiles. Other than this one, which I think someone took and chrome plated the casing instead of brass. You'll see this one's been nickel plated or chrome plated. So that kind of makes that stand out. But uh, it's an interesting uh, area of collecting militaria, so to speak. But shell art, here's a little, here's a small one right here. Look at that. And this one just says uh, 20, 29 something or other on there. And I can't even read that one. But there's another real light pounding on that one. But nevertheless, shell art. So that being said, Values, if you're out collecting or if you like to collect this type of thing and wonder what these may be worth, 
um, most of this I, I speculate on. If you go to uh, gun shows and so on, you'll see some pretty hefty prices on these things. And like I say, when the show's over, if the item is still there, it was too much. That being said, I would value something like this special in shell art at probably around $75 to $100. So it really has a lot to do with how elaborate things were done. Most of the things we're showing here today are from World War I. Be assured that they did the same thing in World War II, and I've seen versions of these that were done in the Second World War that are even better. Very elaborate, sometimes using garnets in the eyes of animals. Really slick stuff. But based on their size, you would look at something like this perhaps at around $45, maybe up to as much as $75. But I would value the larger pieces of shell art, once again, also known as trench art, in the uh, $125 to $225 range. So that's just something that we pulled off the shelves today for this segment. Now, if you have something you're curious about, want to know the value of, or just want to let us know what you think of these segments, just enter it right in the comment box that you see at the bottom of each one and let us know what you think. And if you have something that you're curious about and you want to email photos of the item, we'll be glad to address it in a future episode of Wilson's World. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.